to Wednesday co live coffee talk show. I'm Michelle Quay. I am a confidence and leadership coach, and I work with negative self talk there to get them to believe their talents and strengths so that they can actually be very successful in both professional and personal life. I am really honored today because I have another professional speaker on my show, and her name is Ka Dr. Candace Drummond. Dr. Candace Drummond has a mission to improve the occupational and financial health of private practice practitioner through her hashtag doctor without, without burnout. I love that, you know, we all get burned out. So doctors without burnout program featuring services offered by aged group of companies. As a long-term long -time mental health and psych psychology service provider, she is unique aware of self-care and finance challenges that they push that uh, most private practitioner providers to burn out. And I am guilty of that. We, I'm sure she can uh, talk me through that. Um, she founded her company um, <clears throat> to help others providing expand the uh, comprehensive of the services provision, earn more money, attract and retain more patients and protecting their investments all while working less. I love that. I love how you bring money, but working less. Don't we all dream that? <laughs> As a clinical psychology and licensed mental health counselor, she is able to conceptualize even the most complex cases and providing strategy planning to best assess, evaluate, and treat various mental health modalities. She is dynamic leaders, public speakers, licensed insurer agent, mental health expert, finance planner, strategy planning expert for doctors and therapists, and the list just go on and on and on. And without further ado, please join me and with a warm welcome, Dr. Candace Drummond. Hi, Candace. Thank you so much, Michelle, for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, my, my goal is really to help private practice practitioners, private practice owners, um, business owners really to earn more money while working less. Um, I specialize working with uh, physicians, therapists, and other doctors because I find that doctors are often the most susceptible to burnout. You know, we, we really uh, value what we do. We value our patients, we value our work, and we have a hard time stepping away or delegating or finding a way to create the work-life balance that we dreamed of when we started our business. And so um, I, I, I work with a coach and I, I really, um, work as as a coach and and a, and a partner with the practices that I work with. Mm -hmm. I think one of the um, especially you have a very extensive bio, and when I when I received it, I was like, oh man, this woman is full of accomplishment. And what did she do? And how did she get here? It was just a very impressive uh, resume. It was a very impressive journey of life that you took. So I'm really wondering, you know, I'm really curious about why the burnout, like what, what was it about the addressing the, the healthcare professional or professional providers, um, their burnout is so important to you? Well, um, I think because I, I saw it happen to myself. Um, I worked as a licensed mental health counselor uh, therapist for more than a decade, about 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, before I became a clinical psychologist. And I suffered from what is often uh, called in the field emotional fatigue, um, which is really a therapist's burnout. You, you, you stop being able to connect with your patients in the way that is really necessary for their best interest. Um, and a lot of the times it, it, it reduces your effectiveness as a therapist. And I didn't want to I didn't want to continue that and I needed to find a way to get my passion back, but also to help others not lose their passion because we need therapists, we need counselors, we need doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and since, you know, um, a colleague of mine actually works a lot with 
uh, suicide among doctors, um, which is one of the highest in, in, in any industry. And so it's, it's very important that we, we pay attention to our own, our own self-care and our own uh, life, you know, while, while caring for the lives of others. And I think, you know, ha had you always wanted to be a therapist? Was that something that you always dreamed about, like when you were little? <laughs> Did you wake up one day and they say, you know, uh, Candace, I imagine Candace, like this uh, young six-year-old waking up and suddenly she want to be a therapist. Did you? It was nothing like that. Um, I feel like I fell into mental health by accident. Um, when I when I was younger, I always wanted to be a doctor, and I tell people, you know, I made it there. I just took the scenic route. Um, but I I I wanted to be a, a medical doctor. I wanted to be an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. um, and as I got through the basics, you know, pre med courses in undergrad, I realized just how much I disliked touching people. Um, I, I, I didn't really like the idea of constantly prodding and, and poking and, and, you know, all of those types of things. And so the, the idea of a, of a surgery rotation, all of those things became really uh, unattractive to me. And, and so I actually uh, went to work right after my bachelor's in psychology. I went to work at a private school for children with severe emotional disturbances. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was my first foray into the mental health world. And they, they made me uh, one of the behavioral specialists, um, taught me their, their, their process, their programs. I also took some ABA courses, applied behavior analysis uh, courses um, right after uh, undergrad so that I could understand this process and that was where I realized that, you know, the bachelor's in psychology helped you to understand psychology of people, but there were no interventions given in that bachelor's. There was no training on how to actually help people or, or what to do if such and such occurred. And so I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's really interesting. I want to learn more interventions. And so, like I said, I took these ABA courses and then I went to school for my master's in mental health counseling and that was what really changed my my view and like i said i loved therapy i loved it for like i said more than a decade um it was it was truly the joy of my life um i i did i did therapy with with children with adults in substance abuse in prisons homelessness um i've worked with almost every population that you can think of um and i've uh from 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 the very very poor to even the very very wealthy um mm -hmm. who a lot of people think you know have no mental health problems and and you know mental health doesn't see your bank account mental health doesn't see your your degrees or any of those things and so i i think that it was really really beneficial for me to be able to work with so many different populations and um once i once i i started to burn out as a therapist was when i realized that i could get even more interventions as a psychologist that didn't require as much uh as much talking you know like i could get the answers to these questions through these various tests and and assessments and so it was like this whole new way of of almost cracking open the puzzle and and getting to the to the meat of the issue um mm -hmm. even quicker and so i i fell in love again you know with with psychological testing and evaluation and neuropsychology and and so that you know was really my journey it was it was more a, a personal almost just like i say you just kind of fall into something and realize this is this is what i was meant to do mm -hmm. it, it feels like really passionate as you're talking about it i could feel the 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 fire that's like coming out of it <laughs> you're you're so animated and, and so full of energy describing yep yeah, this is what i was meant to do <laughs> uh, you know so i know psychology and all this mental uh, mindset and and mental health issues it's very complex but if we were to 
looking at all the population that you have helped and support, what would be the underlying, if we were to narrow it down to like one single generalized um, issue that all people experience, everyone have, what would that be? What I would always tell people is that a lot of the times the issue that is most obvious mm -hmm. is not the issue. It's more of a symptom of the issue. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Um, the, the greatest example for me is substance abuse. So a lot of people look at substance abuse and they think of substance abuse as the problem. The per, you know, taking the drug, drinking the alcohol, whatever, that is the problem. However, almost every time that is not the problem. Substance abuse is a symptom of what the problem is. And the problem may be depression, maybe grief, maybe, you know, like I said, some underlying issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's all it's almost the same in depression you know we'll see uh people that 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 present very irritable aggressive uh you know snap at at the minute you know always have a short fuse and that is actually a symptom of the depression is not the the issue they're you know oh i have an anger problem I hear that a lot, and that's typically not the problem. Anger is almost is almost never the problem. Anger is a symptom. And so a lot of the times what I try to tell people is try to think of the reason this first became necessary, mm -hmm. right? So um, even with anger, what was the thing that anger was first protecting you from? Because anger is a protective emotion. So what was it first protecting you from? It was protecting you from this feeling of hurt or this feeling of betrayal. It was protecting you from this loss that, you know, I mean, all of us right now are experiencing almost this, this unanimous feeling of loss from, from loss of our freedoms, loss of our friendships, loss of our contact. And, and again, we deal with it in different ways. And those dealing with it, that's the symptom the loss is really the problem. And so I, I tell people to be mindful, to give grace to those symptoms, you know, like it, 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 we, we, right now, the most important thing we can give to others and to ourselves is just give a little grace because we're not, we're not necessarily sure of what the actual underlying problem is. And so give some time, give some grace and, and, and try to dig a little bit deeper from what you see on the surface. That's so beautifully said. <laughs> That's so beautifully said to a very complex issue. It's not, it's not the symptom that you got to prescribe the drug, right? It's the underlying disease or condition that you have to deal with that you have to look at. And that's where your cure comes out. And I love what you said about grace. Um, and I'm, as you mentioned earlier, you got into this whole uh, therapy and being a therapist and helping others. It was because of part of it was your own personal journey that inspires you, that lit up the fire within you. So if we were to relate back to how did you give yourself grace and what does grace mean for you? Well, um, I can I can tell you uh, right at, at at when quarantine and lockdown started, um, I felt like most single moms who you know you got to do everything. I I still have to run my business. I have to you know teach my daughter all her letters. I have to be a, you know a, a pre K teacher. I have to now learn how to be a chef. I have to you know I've got to do all of these things because that 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 that's the only way to be a good mom. Um, and that lasted about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I love and how so, it. it lasts about two weeks. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, that, that it, it, it's not sustainable. You know, it, it just it just really isn't. And I had to, I had to give myself a, a, a little grace. I had to to sit back and think about the type of mother I wanted to be for my daughter. Um, I wanted to be present. I wanted to be loving, um, and trying to do everything and be everything was making me frustrated, uh, was making me preoccupied, 
was making me irritable. Um, you know, she would say things like, you know, I want my nice mommy. <laughs> And, and I know a lot of people can relate to that. Like being a daughter, I would see my mom. I, you know, I don't need you to be a perfect mom. I just need to be my mom. Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, you start to, you start to reprioritize, you know, really, really what's important. And so in order for me to be nice mom, um, in order for me to, to be present for her, I couldn't teach her her letters because trying to teach her her letters made me very frustrated. It, uh, it, 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 it was, it was just too much for me. Um, I'm, you know, I, and I, and I wasn't feeling productive and by me not feeling productive again, I'm depressed and I'm not the best for her. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I started working on, on small projects for myself and, ways to to make myself happier and that included you know this move um to jamaica so um i wanted to live where i could see the ocean um i wanted to live you know like i said somewhere where it wasn't so fast-paced and you know so uh so much pressure for my day-to-day -day life um and or, or hers I wanted it to be where we could both be very happy. Right now, she is at a, a local sitter, a uh, babysitter, and she's having fun. The, the neighbor girls, you know, ask me when they see me around, oh, is Avery there? You know, they're, they're all going up there to go see her. You know, she's got friends, and, and, and I have this time where I can be productive and uh, pursue my own dreams and my own goals. And enjoy the the beautiful scenery like i say you know it's a beautiful day i decided to sit outside and you know this is this is what i'm able to do and when i pick her up you know i am nice mommy <laughs> <laughs> you're nice and calm mommy there's no angry mommy no burned out mommy <laughs> oh no you know and uh, and that's you know a lot of the times i think as, as especially as single moms um other or single parents other other people don't understand the amount of support and assistance that we used to get from school, from daycare, from babysitters, from grandparents. A lot of these things that have been cut off from us uh, during the, the during the the COVID and the quarantine and whatnot. Um, and and you know, it, it, I I made a short uh, webinar to teach moms, you know, how to create this me time for themselves, how to coordinate their work schedule with their kids' work schedules and their school schedules, how to create at least two to three hours every day uh, for exercise. And just like I said, for me time, just to, you know, maybe take a hot bath or read a book or just, you know, or create a webinar like I did, you know, <laughs> like, you know, so it, 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 it allows, you know, um, I, I also uh, have bonuses on sleep training. Because I know right now, parents are struggling with keeping their kids on a schedule because, you know, it's difficult when, you know, you might not have a, a, a set time to wake up or a set time to go to bed or any of those types of things. And so it becomes really, really pl problematic where the children are up all night or, you know, they're eating in the middle of the night while you're asleep. Like all of these, all of these factors become, become issues. And so I have a, a, a section, a little bonus in there actually on sleep training for infants and toddlers and also how to create the, the the sleep environment what they call uh sleep time hygiene for uh for older kids to kind of prepare them for that wind down time at night uh, my daughter my daughter's sleep training is 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 like flawless uh we've been doing it since she was about four months old and i promise you she literally turns off like a light she tries to stay awake and oh. even if I'm not involved, even if I, you know, I'm in the shower or I'm on the phone or whatever, you know, you know, 8.30 comes and it, it's like a switch. She just, 
<laughs> you 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 gotta share share more of that. Where 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 can people find that? You know, where can the people find that information? Is it is it called? Because I know you've been putting out a lot of videos. It's called put it into practice. Yeah, put it into practice is actually just my weekly live where I do bring out all kinds of information that's available to the public and in, um, in private practices all over the country. Um, the webinar that I created though is called Mommy Me Time and I'll actually send you the link. Um, it's on Sam Cart. You can, you know, just go on there. I think it's only like $17 or something. You know, it's, it's, it's about 30 minutes. It comes with three or four uh, PDF bonuses that include the sleep training. Um, um, how to create your schedule, um, how to uh, some some uh, rewards and consequences for for to in, improve uh, your children's like uh, co uh, cooperation with the schedules because you want them to cooperate. Um, it even has meal ideas um, for for some of the big meals that you want to pre prepare in in the middle of the day. Uh, all of these things that are based on on proven ABA and behavior modification treatments and, and interventions that, like I say, uh, performed uh, consistently over time will, will create the, the life that you need and the space and the time. Like I say, because I'll be sitting there, you know, with my daughter, you know, and she just falls asleep. And so now I've got, you know, an hour, two hours to just have to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something that a lot of mom and dad, a lot of parents are struggling because I was just in a conversation the other day and it was, it was sleep deprived. People are sleep deprived because their kids have so much energy now that they are so bound at home. There's nowhere else to let that energy out. So what do you do? The, the, the kids will keep you up at night and you can't have that. You can't tolerate that. <laughs> Oh, my, my daughter and I, every day, one really great thing, especially for the little ones, anywhere from seven, eight down, uh, we do a 30-minute dance party every day. Uh, and so we'll turn on the music and we'll just go nuts, just jump around, dance. And that, uh, that um, creates, again, I have, again, that's in my, my webinar, physical activity ideas for when you're inside. You know, so there are, there are, games that we play that are similar to leapfrog but you know have different uh different goals or motives um we have um indoor trampolines there are lots of these small trampolines that you know i know three and four year olds they'll literally jump for hours you know you just put them in this thing and <laughs> and again that wears them out you know while not wearing you out or wearing your furniture out right mm -hmm. um so there are you know there are lots of these uh, little ideas and even some family like i say some family activities including the dance party um that that are that are doable and you can even do the dance party on zoom with some of their other friends so that they're all dancing you know together and 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 you know again it creates that 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 connection that a lot of us are missing mm -hmm. these are great ideas and i know i know my sister can definitely use a few she has two boys and and they're energized and, and she's getting burned out <laughs> Yeah, and that's and that's a real thing, you know. Mommy burnout can lead to some really serious consequences. Um, and I'm, I'm I, and I keep saying mommy, but I definitely mean parent. Um, I I don't, you know, it it again, it doesn't discriminate, you know. So you you want to be very mindful because you want to you want to be the best version of you that you can be. And so when the, you know, when the child starts to become overwhelming, when your life starts to become overwhelming, it is that time that you really need to take a moment and unplug or detach or, you know, take some time for yourself and focus on your needs. And I know that that's like, it's almost blasphemous to say that to a mom or to a dad, like, you know, you need to think about your needs, not your kids' needs, but it's so important to, like I said, to think about your own needs as well, because you have to be the best version of yourself that you can be for your children, because they don't need you to be their educator. They don't need you to be all of these things that we think they need. They need you to be mom, or they need you to be dad, that's it. And yeah. just being there, being present, loving them, appreciating them, listening to them when they're telling their nonsense stories, 
that is the best thing that you can do for your kids and and you know they don't need to to learn all of their letters right now it's so beautiful <laughs> I, mean, I, had to, I had to tell myself that she doesn't need to know all her letters right now but you know what what we have learned is that we, we we've taken can't out of her vocabulary there's nothing she can't do there are things that might be hard and she might need some help but there's nothing that she can't do and so we remove can't but you know she doesn't know the letter h yet you know we're, we're working on it <laughs> oh that's so cool <laughs> that is so cool you're removing the can't from her from her alphabet that's really awesome <laughs> I, I think she's um, she's gonna turn out to be strong and resilient and you know very very uh, outspoken you know with all the letters that she needs um, from her great mom. I think so. And by the way, friends, you can follow Dr. Candice Drummond at her Facebook. Um, you can just type in Dr. Drummond's, and she uh, I will have all the links to her to follow her in the comments, in the uh, episode note later when we're done with this video. I'll send you the link to the Mommy Me Time webinar so that you can link, you know, link that as well. That would be perfect. That would be awesome. Because I know a lot of people out there, there a lot of parents out there are actually looking for a way out. And you know, you coming onto the show today, you just gave them a way out of that burnout. So I hope all friends, you know, you got to go and follow and check her out because she has great work and, and she's just an amazing person. So I want to kind of move forward in, in your life, looking at where you are now. And I know you are in a very good place. We were t before we came on live, we were talking about Jamaica and she's uh, living in this beautiful place and there's a waterfall. She's really enjoying it. But where to go from here? Um, so right now, as, as with many businesses, you know, my business saw a significant drop in revenue in the first six months of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, right now we're in a rebuilding phase. Um, like I said, I am working with a business coach to, to work with me on, on that rebuilding. And I'm hoping that, um, our rebuilding and our, our, uh, re focusing will actually result in even greater growth um, than we saw over the last couple of years, which was um, remarkable to begin with. Um, I'm also hoping to connect with the Ministry of Health here in Jamaica. Um, the Ministry of Health has been working to implement and expand behavioral health and mental health services here on the island. Um, and I'm hoping to be instrumental um, in, in leading that and, and, and being a part of, of a movement that is long overdue uh, to, to many black and brown countries uh, around the world. Um, and so I really wanna be instrumental in, in bringing that to, back to uh, a country that I, is so dear to my heart. And so um, I have, I have, I've already reached out to the ministry. And um, so I would say within, you know, I guess those are my, my, my 12 month uh, plans right now um, are, you know, business expansion nationwide uh, in the U.S. as well as, like I said, working with the ministry here um, in Jamaica uh, to, to expand mental health services on the island. Yeah, sounds amazing. And this is really your passion uh, moving forward and you're doing everything to realign, you know, that passion. And I think one of the points that you brought up is this is a great point, you know, even though the business has dropped, but you took this time to really refocus and realign what your business means for you and how do you want to create that future vision rather than, you know, sitting, choosing and sitting at home and feeling, well, what am I going to do? Feeling that anxiety. It's a complete different perspective of how we're dealing with things. Well, you know, the, the thing that moves me, you know, and they always say, you know, focus on your why, you know, what's your purpose. And the thing that moves me is being able to live freely. Um, that's always been the thing that drives me. So um, I, it, like you say, as, as, as things were more difficult to live 
freely and comfortably for myself in the States because of our drop in the revenue. Um, like you say, instead of, uh, you know, being sad about it or, or whatever, I simply looked for a way to recreate or create that freedom that, that that's what my life is about. Um, and, you know, where can I do that? Where can I feel free, live free, um, be comfortable? Uh, where can I um, rebuild um, and, and actually take advantage of the, of the, you know, any reduction in, in expenses, any, any where, you know, where can I reduce these costs? Where can I, um, any of these things? And I, I did all of that. I did, you know, the tightening of the belt, the uh, letting go of, of, of unneeded expenses. I, I downsized where I could, everything, you know, everything that I could do. Um, I did, we didn't get very much, or well, we didn't get any uh, government assistance as far as, you know, SBA or PPP or any of those kinds of things. And so I have really, um, by my own uh, knowledge of finances, my own strategic planning, been able to actually keep my, my, my company open, um, reduce the expenses. And like I say, still live with a with the level of freedom that is important to me um which is my why I, I i need that freedom if i if i can't have it then then there's no point to having a business the the the, the whole point has been ruined <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really important. I think, uh, you know, Simon Sinek really had a great uh, topic on talking about why. Why does company need to have a why? Why do we as a person need to have a why? And, you know, I, a lot of time I encourage people, if you don't have a mission statement for yourself, uh, think about creating your own mission statement because that is your reason. That is, that is your why. And that why is going to take you far, take you further and take you stronger. So I love what you share about why. <laughs> so, it, 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 leads, it leads my decisions. It leads my decisions. Yeah, it's so important. So before I let you go, I always ask this to uh, my guests. <laughs> because looking around in the world, there's a lot of things that we all need, right? We need internet, we need, we need money, we need lots of things. So, but in your opinion, what does the world need in just one word? Ah, one word. Okay, then my one word would be grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need we need more grace. I think that there's so much there's so much anger, there's so much judgment, there's so much uh expectation. Um of others and of ourselves and we need we need more grace we need to um we need to give some people a break and we need to give ourselves a break um it's 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 that kind of time right now i love it it's a beautiful word grace grace is keep showing up in my life right now over and over for the last couple of weeks so grace Thank you so much, Candace. No, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure. I, I really enjoyed it and I appreciate, like I say, you having me on and I'll send you the Mommy Me Time link. I hope it helps a lot of folks. It, it will. I know a lot of mommies and daddy can really take a look and <laughs> find them useful right now. <laughs> thank you, Candace. And thank you everyone for watching another episode of Live Coffee Talk. This is a show that I air every Wednesday at eight o'clock Pacific time. This is where I bring you love, courage, and connection. And you know, if you look at the world today, we are connected in so many different ways with our love and with our courage. So get up in the morning, grab your coffee, and let's move on with it. So. Have a great week, everyone. Bye, Candice. Enjoy your vacation. <laughs> She's laughing now. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy the vacation. Bye. <laughs>